Welcome to this special edition of Be Less Stupid. For the next few minutes, I'm going to tell you about a unique experience that I had yesterday as one of the only journalists so far to see some of the worst, most awful devastation that resulted from the Woolsey Fire that has killed three people and destroyed 98,000 acres in the west portion of California's San Fernando Valley and the city of Malibu. This was my fourth day covering the fires. I was there the day that the fire started. So you can see the wind moves pretty fast. The following day is it nearly destroyed huge swaths of homes in Calabasas. So we're here up in the hills, up in uh, Calabasas. And uh, these guys just saved a couple of dozen houses from uh, going up. Pretty amazing. The next day as flames ignited and destroyed thousands of acres in the mountains above Malibu. And then yesterday too. So here's something that, uh, boy, just awful. Take a look. You can see there. There used to be a house here. Let me begin by saying that the damage done to Malibu and the San Fernando Valley is almost beyond description. Huge swaths of picturesque landscapes nestled between green mountains and the Pacific Ocean have been burned and destroyed by a raging fire that was so hot it melted street signs and reduced homes to rubble in less than the time a block of commercials run during primetime TV. It was like nothing that most of us have ever seen in real life. Because I live in Los Angeles, this report is primarily about the Woolsey Fire, uh, which happened uh, just a few miles from my house, uh, and not the Northern California Fire, which destroyed the entire town of Paradise and killed 63 people so far. Here in the San Fernando Valley, an entire mountain range that was green just five or six days ago now looks like what we all think the surface of the moon looks like. Just to give you a sense of the size of just this area that burned, this stretch of mountain that runs parallel to Las Virginis Road is more than 15 miles long. And the distance from the south of the fire at Pepperdine to Neptune's Net in the north is about 15 miles as well. Just this area is about 98,000 acres, or about one and a half times the size of Denver. And everywhere you look, the unmistakable sign of a race against Mother Nature's wrath as a plane flies through and drops hundreds of thousands of gallons of that red fire retardant gel, a substance that doesn't specifically put fire out, rather it coats flammable material and causes it to burn more slowly. The result is that the fire spreads its deadly flame slowly as well. And despite the colossal damage done to homes, outdoor space, green areas, national parks, infrastructure and businesses, the damage would have been a whole lot worse, much worse, were it not for the thousands of brave firemen who risked their lives defending homes and property. As I drove up and down the PCH yesterday, which was closed to everyone other than work crews, fire, and police, there was near countless spots where the fire danced right to the edge of a home or a business, yet through some sheer force of will or karma, or a sudden shift in the winds, or just good old-fashioned fireman work, multiple homes and businesses were spared. 
And yet, there are almost as many examples of homes and businesses that weren't saved from the fire's intense and wretched wrath. In this Malibu community, maybe a dozen or more homes were destroyed by the fire. And at this particular home, the only thing that was left standing was the washer and dryer. This is one of the few houses on the west side of the PCH that was destroyed in the fire. Just unlucky. The fire was obviously on the other side of the road, and it, uh, at this particular spot, it jumped across the street, and it destroyed this house that's about, I don't know, 75 or 100 yards uh, from the ocean. Hundreds of homes seem to be chosen, quite frankly, at random. Winners of the worst lottery ever. Fire dances close to several properties. And thanks to wind changes or underbrush, bad karma or chance, a single home among many is destroyed. And not just the beams, the roof and the walls, a lifetime of possessions and memories too. And all that remains to alert you that a home once stood in this spot is the charred ash of the once tall and rigid beams, or the metal that made up household appliances and furniture. Here's some of the statistics from the Woolsey fire. The cause is currently under investigation. 3,319 firemen were called to duty to fight the fire. 442 fire engine trucks were also called to the scenes. The city used 16 helicopters to both spot fires and drop water. 616 structures have been destroyed. That's homes, businesses, and infrastructure. Thousands of Malibu residents will be without power, water, and gas for weeks, if not longer, as hundreds of crews work around the clock to remove burnt power line poles and install new ones, restring electric and phone lines, and inspect and repair damaged water and sewer pipes. Early estimates are that the fire caused seven to $10 billion in damage. And there's already talk that the insurance companies may stop insuring for fire damage or raise the rates so high as to make them unaffordable. Complicating matters even more so, according to a 2014 study, builders in California are on pace to put up 650,000 new homes in highly prone fire zones in the next 20 years. And just when you thought that the flames were nearly out, a new threat faces the residents of Malibu. On Saturday, the city is bracing for a visit from President Trump, who plans to tour the damaged areas and meet with residents. That is, assuming it doesn't rain. If you want to make a donation, you can follow the links on the timelines of the Los Angeles Fire Department and the Los Angeles branch of the Red Cross on Twitter. That's it for this special edition of Be Less Stupid. I would like to thank you very much for watching. And I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to this channel for more unique coverage and insight into politics, science, and human behavior. For Be Less Stupid, I'm the host. I'm the creator, writer, the producer, the editor, and the cameraman, John Hotchkiss. I'll see you next time.